everybody. I trust this day is going well for you. If not, you know, God said he'd be with us. He just didn't say everything would be roses, but he did say he would be with us. As a matter of fact, he said he comes in the time of trouble. So if you're in trouble today, know that you can believe God to come, that he comes and gives you answers. He said, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. As long as, we're real, as long as we are in this earth, things can go wrong, right? We, we all know that. But it doesn't mean that we go wrong. It doesn't mean our hearts become full of fear. It doesn't mean that, that we uh, get crippled up inside because that's why God comes in the time of trouble. As a matter of fact, the word actually talks that God actually comes to give increase. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I love that about him. Increase means uh, to join oneself to, to do more, to add, to even to do it again, that the Lord gives increase. And, and Proverbs eleven twenty three. 23, you might hear this more at offering time, but, uh, and I love offering time because that's an amazing part of uh, serving God. It says, the desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There's, there's a knowing, there's a knowing. If you're doing things wrong, there's a knowing. You may, you know, may, it says that sin even has pleasure for a short time, but th that doesn't last. It grips a hold of you. There is that scattereth and yet increases. And there is that withholds more than is meat, but lendeth to poverty. There's something uh, that increases, that we, we as believers, God has put in us because he, that is what he is like, that we scatter, that we do that which is good. During our day, we're not scattering grumpy. You know, we're not scattering, we're not scattering bad things. Uh, we are to be scattering blessing. When everyone else is irritated, that's a great time for you to be a blessing. When everyone's afraid, that's a great time for you to take courage because what we do increases good. What we do increases what God wants to do in the earth. Uh, in the message, it says, uh, in 1124, the word of the generous, the world, sorry, the world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. So God is a generous God. His kids are to be generous. Uh, that, you know, that's in giving, that's in finances, but what about our lives, that we are generous? That, uh, God does not care if you're an inconvenienced. Have you noticed that? He doesn't care if you're inconvenienced, uh, if you're supposed to be helping, if you're supposed to be doing something. He, he doesn't ask, oh, would you mind doing this? He says, listen, get up, get going, get, do this. Someone needs help or get up. I want to show you something. Get up. I have a business plan for you. Get off that couch. I got stuff for you to do. The liberal soul shall be made fat, become prosperous, and he that waters shall be watered and saturated. What we do, it comes back again. God never says to just give, 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 give. The scripture is so adamant that those that give, things come back again also for their benefit. And people say, well, you should give out of the goodness of your heart. Well, yeah, you should, absolutely. But God never leaves it there. You know, it says, even says that he that giveth to the poor lendeth to God. What does that mean? If you, lend, if you lend something, you get paid back again. He that giveth to the poor lendeth to God. What does it mean? God will repay. God will repay. Hey, we have an amazing situation here that we get to be a blessing. And in the process of that, even when people don't see it, which is fine, even when people don't see it, God sees it, and he has a way to get back at you to be a blessing. It's, a, it's an awesome situation. It says in 28, Proverbs 11, 28, he that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Hallelujah. There is a, there is a life-giving power in the word of God to instruct us for life. You know, thank God that we get to go to heaven. Thanks God that we're attached to the things of the spirit. But listen, God also wants you to flourish in life. So what is that, just financial? No, flourish in your thought patterns, flourish in the condition of your heart, flourish in your parenting, flourish in your job, flourish in your schoolwork. You know, he want, I remember one time I was uh, in a business class and in the business school and 
Oh, I hate every minute. But anyway, I was there. And, uh, and uh, I learned stuff that I used all my life. But I, I remember I was just a pretty new Christian. And we were having an exciting time in the church I was going to. And they had a special guest speaker. And in my usual way, I had a big test for Monday morning. But I thought, you know, I'll study in the afternoon, Sunday afternoon. And, and I don't remember what happened, but Sunday afternoon got kind of consumed. And then they had a service that night. I did not want to miss that service. Things were happening, and I'm the type. I don't want to miss nothing. I want to be in the middle of it, you know. So I thought, oh, it's okay. I'll study after I get home, right? You students may understand this. Some of you are more diligent than me. But anyway, so, of course, I get home, late service. But, oh, I'll get up early in the morning. <laughs> How many know that doesn't always work? I got up late. I got up late because it was such a late night, a great night. So I'm rushing. I get on the bus to go to class. And I think, God, just help me here. And so I started looking through the textbook, you know, and I, and I just, certain things caught my eye. And I looked at that, looked at that, looked at that. Do you know when I got to, got to the class, everything that I stopped and looked at was on that test. I got the highest mark in the class. I'm not my best subject, but I got the highest mark in the class. Because, you know, God knew my heart. Like, it's his, you know, work has its own reward. All of those things, you can't be lazy. But in the process of me making decisions that weren't for best, but my heart, my heart really wanted to be where God was moving all, and he knew all that stuff. And in the process of that, he helped me, not just helped me pass, but I got the top mark in the class because what he, sh what he showed me, he increased my knowledge. And he is the God that increases. He increases things. He doesn't take away, he increases. Hallelujah. The message says a life devoted to things, to things is a dead life. We're devoted to things, it's a dead life. A stump, <laughs> a stump. A God-shaped life, a God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. There is life. A God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. Hallelujah. So it says that uh, increase means that, you know, he gives the increase. Uh, but it says, they, as they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame in, in uh, Hosea 4.7. So that's why the condition of the heart is such an important deal. Because... Your heart has to be right with God. Your heart has to be healed. You have to be whole. Whether you're broke or whether you've got lots of money, it's all about the heart. God is looking at the heart. And he can increase. But when he increases you, when you are blessed, you know, it says in Hosea that, uh, you know, Israel was blessed and they didn't realize that God was the blesser, that he was the one looking after them and they put it all into idolatry. <laughs> he, he doesn't want that happening in our life. So that in the increase, that we recognize what he's doing in our life. He is the God of the increase. Thank you, Father, that you're the one who gives the increase. Thank you, Father, you're the one that gives the increase. Thank you, Jesus. Let me look over here a minute. Thank you, Father. So, you know, um, that we sin against God when we think that we're the one who has increased everything, that it's our knowledge, it's, it's our gifting, it's our everything, you still need the hand of God. You can go a limited place, and you can become well off, all those things, but if the hand of God is not on it, just like my schoolwork, if the, God, if the hand of God is not on it, it is limited. It is limited. And God doesn't want you limited. He wants your life to increase. Because if you're, a, you're a, a person that loves God, then he wants your influence to increase, to increase. You know, and the scripture says, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. To them that have no might, he increases their strength. L listen today. The scripture says, when I am weak, I call myself strong. 
that you have to get out of that place of weakness that you think you have no power or you think you're stuck, you're backed into a wall. No, you're never backed into the wall when Christ is in you because he will show you a pathway through. And sometimes, you know, the Red Sea parts, uh, you know, you want the Red Sea to disappear. No, sometimes he parts what's in front of you and so you can walk through to the other side. Whatever it is, he increases those things and that the increase of, the God, of God is your power and, your, and that's what we need to believe for. Listen, we need to receive, use our faith for those things and those wonderful keys that God has given us to walk the earth. And part of that is increase. He says that, he, that when you have no might, he increases strength. So today, if you're feeling absolutely weary, if today if you're feeling you have no strength, listen, you have a God the Father who created heaven and earth, and he's saying through his son that he gives you strength today. So I pray for that. Let your being receive the strength of your living God today. Where you are weak now, you say it out of your mouth. Where I am weak, I am strong, Paul said. Where I feel weak, I am strong, because where I am weak, God is able to come in and make the difference. He's able to come in and make what you need done. He's able to come in and move the Red Sea. If he needs to move the Red Sea for you, he will move the Red Sea for you because he is the one who gives the increase. He gives increase. So it's not about your power, it's about his power. You're one of his kids, it's about his power. You're one of his children, it's about his power. It's about his strength, it's his, his power to give you grace in whatever situation you're in or whatever you're praying for. Grace, great, one of the meanings of grace is God's power that comes in where you have no power. Hallelujah. We're not meant to do this on our own power. Jesus wants us to, hit, to, to grab hold of his power. You walk with him. You grab hold of his power. You weren't meant to walk the earth without that power. You weren't meant to walk the earth without being connected to that heavenly realm. You weren't meant to walk the earth trying to do your best. God came and said, now I'm your strength. Take my strength. Ask for grace, I give you grace. Put it into his hands today, that, he, that you receive back again, that you receive back again. If he's given you a word, grab hold of that word, because that word is alive and living for you. Listen, he gives you the tools you need to be a blessing on the earth, but also that your being, your well-being is blessed. Salvation, that's one of the means of salvation, means well-being. I pray for well-being for you today, that you do not go on your own strength, but you accept happily the strength of God in Jesus' name. God bless you.